Manometry is the measurement of pressures. In the gastrointestinal tract, we can measure the intraluminal pressure in the esophagus, anal canal and sphincter of body. Conventional manometry had sensors placed in intervals of 3 to 5 cm. This shows a water-perfused catheter and the manometry waveform recorded using it. This is a cross-section of the old-generation water-perfused catheter. The number of pressure channels are limited, and therefore, only a few pressure waves are recorded. But with time, manometry evolved. First, this was the introduction of solid-state catheters. In the esophagus, this enabled simultaneous recording from all segments, without the need to reposition the catheter during the study, known as pull-through technique. To display the large amount of data, color topography is used. A three-dimensional plotting format was devised for depiction of high-resolution manometry studies. Esophageal pressure topography interpolates pressure values between sensors to create a pressure continuum. Cold colors denote low pressures and hot colors denote higher pressures. I presume you are familiar with standard manometry waves. Now imagine each of those tracings as a 3D graph. Now, if we color code the pressures, with warm colors for high pressures and cold colors for low pressures, it would look like this. Are you with me up to there? Now, all we do is flatten that 3D picture into a 2D image, and voila! You can change the amplification of high-resolution color contour. This is useful to detect subtle changes. Another feature of the new software is the isobaric contour. What it does is draw a line joining all the points with the given pressure. You need this in the Chicago classification, because some definitions rely on the isobaric contour. This table compares conventional and high-resolution manometry. These are the common indications to perform esophageal manometry.